Gamer Poet strives to create the most informative and easy to navigate tutorials available, driven by viewer feedback and contribution. What some would do in multiple videos, we do in one. Since the videos are packed full of so much information, a lot of which the general viewer may not even care to know, navigation is provided to accommodate the individual as much as possible. Navigation is appropriately labeled within the sidebar via annotations to each major section. Occasionally, if and when it's needed, a sliding tray will drop down from the top right of the user interface. This has been implemented to allow viewers to skip over information that does not pertain to them in a progressive manner without having to check the video description or without having to guess while dragging on the timeline. However, the video description does provide navigation to every section of the tutorial step by step and I recommend that it be utilized on subsequent viewings. Finally, video platforms such as YouTube are subject to change. The GamerPoet's video interface has been organized in a way that hopes to weather future amendments within the platform. Though, the older this video gets, the more potential there is for the annotations to be hindered. System Requirements Your operating system needs to be Windows 7 or later. Your CPU should be a minimum for the vanilla game, a dual-core 2.0 GHz or equivalent processor. The recommended minimum for heavy modders, according to the STEP project, is an Intel Core i5 equivalent or higher, and the ideal CPU would be a good i7. System RAM The minimum requirement is 2 GB. The recommended minimum for heavy modders, according to the STEP project, is 8 GB. I would personally recommend 16 gigabytes or more. The GPU, the minimum vanilla game requirement, is 512 megabytes of VRAM. The recommended minimum for heavy modders, according to the STEP project, is 3 gigabytes of VRAM or higher. Ideally, 4 gigabytes. Monitor resolution. The minimum requirement is 1366 by 768. The recommended minimum is 1920 by 1080. Disk space. The minimum requirement is 6 GB of free HDD space. The recommended minimum for modders is 30 GB of free HDD space. Ideally, you would like a dedicated 256 GB SDD or larger and 100 GB of free space on an HDD for mod archive storage. For those who care to view a more in-depth chart regarding chipsets and graphics cards for use with Skyrim, visit the unofficial Elder Scrolls Pages System Requirements page. A link is provided in the video description. This tutorial requires a legit and up-to-date version of Skyrim 1.9.32.0. Outdated or stolen copies are not guaranteed to work properly, if at all, when modding your game later on. Windows User Account Control has been known to and proven to interfere with certain modding applications downstream. If Steam is installed to one of the Program Files or Program Files 86 folders, be sure to apply the installation location steps in the following section. If Skyrim is already installed and you are searching for a workaround to this issue, view the User Account Control video linked in the description. Apply the steps within to the Skyrim folder itself. Option 1. For those who already own Skyrim via Steam, open Steam. Navigate to your library. Right click Skyrim. Select Install. Choose Location for Install. Select the location outside of the Program Files and Program Files 86 folders. Option 2. For those yet to purchase Skyrim, go to store.steampower.com. Search for Skyrim. Select the Legendary Edition to acquire all of the DLC. At this point, a lot of popular mods are going to require it. Enter your birth date to continue. Select Add to Cart. Select Purchase for Myself. Sign in if you aren't already. Complete the purchase. If the install window does not automatically open after your purchase, open the Steam application. Go to your library. Right-click Skyrim. Select Install Game. At the install window, choose Location for Install. Select the location outside of the Program Files and Program Files 86 folders. Select Next. If you receive a Terms window, select I Agree. After installation begins, select Finish. Option 3. Installation from Disk The benefit to having the game disk is that installation will be faster than downloading the game from Steam. Although you have the game on disk, you will still need to log in to Steam to finish the installation. Insert the first disk into your computer. Push the Windows key plus R to open Run. 
in the run window, type the Steam Drive Leather, colon, backslash Steam, backslash Steam.exe, space, dash install, space, the DVD Drive Leather, colon. Select OK. Launch Skyrim through Steam or via the Skyrim Launcher.exe. The Skyrim Launcher is located in Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Skyrim. Simply bringing up the Skyrim menu will establish all registries and any files. Without doing this, certain modding applications will not work. Select Options. If the Detecting Video Hardware window opens, select OK to default all game values based on your system's capabilities. The Graphics Adapter automatically displays your GPU. Aspect Ratio displays the proportional relationship between your monitor's width and height. Resolution. Set to the highest resolution that your monitor can handle. Lower the resolution to trade quality for better performance. Anti-aliasing. Directly related to the jagged and crawling lines at the edges of objects. Select 4 samples. The subtle difference between 4 and 8 is not worth the performance impact. If using an EMB graphical preset, set to Off Best Performance. An isotropic filtering. Directly affects texture clarity that is displayed at an angle on screen. Select 16 samples. 8 samples will provide the slightest of performance gains for a noticeable drop in quality. If using an ENB graphical preset, set to off best performance. All of the settings mentioned from here on can be raised, lowered, and turned off or on to trade quality for performance. Test them for your own system. While modding your game will use more and more resources over time, these settings are a good, middle-of-the-road starting point for everyone. Furthermore, changing any of the settings from here on out within the launcher will reset your any files. It is recommended to only use the launcher before modding your game to avoid errors. When you have begun modding, you should edit the any files directly and avoid the launcher altogether. Using Mod Organizer allows you to avoid these worries. Choosing the low, medium, high, or ultra option will implement a preset of values for all of the options within the Advanced tab. Choosing default will reset the options to what they were at the end of the basic registry in any file section. Open the Advanced section. FXAA. Personal preference. Subtly blurs all game images to help compensate for jaggedness and other undesirable effects. Can be offset with EMB log bias within the EMB local.ini file. Less performance heavy than AA if used by itself, but can be used in conjunction with all forms of AA. I personally have FXAA turned on. Texture quality. Affects the depth and detail of all textures. Set to high. Radial Blur Quality affects the amount of blur during situations such as being struck in battle, set to low. Shadow Detail determines the overall resolution of most shadows cast in game, set to Ultra. Decal Quantity affects the number of decals such as dirt, blood, and scorch marks, set to Ultra. Water Reflect Land determines whether or not water will display land reflections. Activate the checkbox. Reflect Objects determines whether or not water will display object reflections. Activate the checkbox. Reflect Trees determines whether or not water will display tree reflections. Activate the checkbox. Reflect Sky determines whether or not water will display sky reflections. Activate the checkbox. View Distance Object Detail Fade Personal preference causes subtle detail reduction in the furthest active grids. A very small quality gain is had when deactivated. I have object detail fade turned off. Distant object detail controls the level of detail placed on distant objects such as hills and mountains. Set to ultra. Grass fade controls the amount and distance at which grass, shrubs, and small bushes are visible. Set to 7. Object Fade controls the distance at which a range of non-critical world objects, such as rocks, fences, and pathways, are visible. Set to 8. Actor Fade controls the distance at which characters and creatures can be seen. Set to 8. Specularity Fade controls the shininess of various objects and surfaces. Set to 8. Item Fade controls the distance at which items such as weapons, armor, and potions can be seen. Set to 8. Light Fade controls the distance at which lighting is cast from dynamic sources. Set to 17. Close the advanced window. Select OK on the main Skyrim Options window. Select Exit. 
Installing Skyrim is time-consuming. Reinstalling Skyrim from an archive is much faster than downloading the files from Steam. Creating an unmodified backup will allow you to quickly reinstall the game if it is ever deleted for any reason. If you uninstall Skyrim, returning the files from the archive that we are going to create to their former locations will reinstall it. This is completely optional, but for those who want to know how to do it, navigate to Steam, Steam Apps, Common. Right-click and copy the Skyrim folder. Paste it to your desktop. Navigate to the Operating System Drive Letter, Users, Your User Account, Documents, My Games, Copy the Skyrim folder. Go to your desktop. Create a new folder, name it My Games. Paste the Skyrim folder inside of the new My Games folder. In the File Directory bar, navigate to your Operating System Drive Letter, Users, Your User Account, App Data, Local, Skyrim. If you do not have permission to access your app data folder, you will have to enable folder permissions. A link to how is in the video description. Copy all of the folder's contents. Go to the desktop. Create a new folder. Name it App Data. Within App Data, create a new folder. Name it Local. Create a final folder within Local and name it Skyrim. Paste the information just copied in the new Skyrim folder. On your desktop, click and drag the mouse over the three new folders, Skyrim, My Games, and App Data. Right-click and select Add to Archive. Name the archive Vanilla Skyrim. Navigate to Steam, Steam Apps, Common. Right-click the Skyrim folder, delete it. Navigate to Users, your user account name, My Documents, My Games. Right-click the Skyrim folder and delete it. Navigate to the Operating System Drive Letter, Users, User Account, App Data, Local. Right-click the Skyrim folder, delete it. I'd like to thank all of you for watching this video. A big thank you for the wikisteppproject.com for tons of this information, encouragement and tutorial development, and their overall support. Some of this information has also come from GeForce.com and a big thank you to the unofficial Elder Scrolls pages where not only a lot of this information has come from, but information in general about this Elder Scrolls game and all of the others. I highly recommend that you check out both the Step Project and the unofficial Skyrim pages. There are also a few community members, some names of which I cannot pronounce, who have indirectly or directly contributed to this tutorial by leaving comments and information within. So a big thank you to those of you listed and to all of you watching for the constant support and encouragement. As always, I am Michael of Gamer Poets. Thank you for watching.